think it's really good that there are so many clubs of all levels already in discussion about community ownership and I think that there's a momentum behind that and I would just wish uh, fans and those are involved in discussions about community ownership all the best. I think it's a model that will work, work well for many clubs and I would encourage them to, to go for it. The benefit, other benefits of community ownership are the, the governance models that are available now and that's changed in the last two or three years where football clubs are not just run fiduciary for the benefit of the shareholders, although shareholders can be fans. There's now governance models out there that the football club must be ran for the benefit of the community. And I think that in social enterprise has a far bigger benefit to football clubs and the communities they're in and therefore the fans rather than just this last 50 years of here's how a private limited company works as a football club. Yeah, I think community ownership, um, is, is the benefits of community ownership are exactly what it says. It's, it's owned and run for the community, it's owned by the community, for the community. And I think what you then do is you, you associate the way that club is run with the people who actually are passionate and care about that club. Uh, and you therefore take away some of the risks that are associated with um, other people coming in who perhaps got different objectives. The kind of organisations we're talking about are social institutions, they're community institutions, um, and if they have any future at all, it's because they're actually located in their community. And I think it's both an opportunity um, and a challenge for communities to demonstrate that these organisations are indeed central to their community. But I think it gives a part of way forward, which has got sort of direction and kind of excitement rather than this um, kind of risk that is associated with uh, individual benefactors or individual owners.